Hi, I'm Buzz Hoagland. For 30 years, I've been bringing college students, colleagues, friends, volunteers down to trap mongoose in St. Croix, or as the Crusians say, they're mongoose dem. We catch these animals in live traps, and then we insert these little tags under their skin, just like they use in house pets back in the States. We do that so that when we recapture them, we can identify who they are. St. Croix is a small island in the Caribbean, one of the U.S. Virgin Islands just to the southeast of Puerto Rico. During the past dozen or so years, we have been live trapping mongoose almost exclusively on Sandy Point National Wildlife Refuge, located on the west end of St. Croix. The refuge is the largest sea turtle nesting beach in the United States, and mongoose have been observed digging up sea turtle eggs. Leatherback, green, and hawksbill sea turtles all nest on this wildlife refuge. The refuge is located on a peninsula with a large salt pond in the middle of it that is a natural barrier to mongoose because these animals don't swim. However, there are two small slivers of land on each side of the salt pond that do provide mongoose access to the refuge. When I first came to St. Croix back in the late 1970s, Sandy Point was a favorite beach and fishing spot for the local people. Now it is a U.S. wildlife refuge that was created to protect the nesting sea turtles. Hundreds of sea turtles visit Sandy Point every year, and during the turtle nesting season, the refuge is closed to recreational use. We have a key to the gate and have 24-hour access to our trapping sites. However, we don't enter the nesting areas of the turtles. We use standard small mammal live traps. The traps are flattened for storage and need to be put back into service for each trapping session. After much experimentation, we found that chicken feet, purchased cheaply at the local grocery store, make excellent bait. We set traps in a variety of configurations. Sometimes we set traps out in a grid or a line in a particular area back from the road. We set traps in the underbrush in a place where the trap will remain shaded throughout the day. Mongoose would quickly overheat if they were left out in the sun. After setting each trap, we mark its location with surveyors flagging to ensure that we'll be able to find the trap again. We also record each trap site with a GPS so that we can plot the location of each capture on a map. We have found that we can also easily catch animals by setting traps close to the road, which is quick and convenient. But there are a number of things you need to look out for when working in the field in Sandy Point. Most of the trees and shrubs are covered with nasty little thorns. The nastiest thorns are on the cat claw, or wait a bit bush, which has razor sharp recurved thorns at the base of every leaf. They grab you and won't let go. Another particularly nasty shrub is the Christmas bush. Don't chop that branch, you clown! Christmas bush has the same oil in its leaves as poison ivy and will give you a nasty rash. You need to keep an eye open for termite nests in the trees when setting traps. The termites make tunnels on the undersides of branches, and if you disturb them, the warrior termites will come out and give you a little bite. There are also particularly fierce paper wasps called Jack Spaniards that will sting you repeatedly if you stick your head into their nest, as I did this year. There are other things in the leaf litter as well, like scorpions, centipedes, and giant millipedes. Millipedes look scary, but they're actually harmless and you can handle them safely. Don't try that with a centipede, though. We also have a few trail cameras that we set up to see what happens around the traps when we're not there. The trail cameras are sometimes finicky, but we can often get stills or videos of mongoose behavior around the traps. Mongoose are primarily active during the late daylight hours, but tend to avoid the hottest parts of the day. So that is when we generally set and check our traps. After we set the traps, we head back to wait until the next day to see what we've caught. During the intervening hours, the mongoose smell out the chicken feet in our traps. 
go in to investigate and sometimes get caught. The next day we may find a mongoose in the trap, but we also sometimes catch other things. For example, this is a blue land crab, which is common on the refuge. Apparently they like chicken feet too. We occasionally catch the Norway rat the animal the mongoose was introduced to control those many years ago. <laughs> we sometimes even find feral house cats. This one was taken to the local animal shelter. But we mostly catch mongoose them. Sometimes we even catch two in the same trap. This was a mother and a juvenile. I think her little son was with her. We bring the mongoose back to our Crucian laboratory to process them. First, we have to get the animals out of the trap and into a bag. This allows us to control the animal more easily and to weigh it. Large males can weigh a kilogram or more. Females are generally about half that size. Next, while still in the bag, I grab the animal behind the head. Don't try this at home. Once I have secured hold of the animal, we can check to see if it's already been marked using a pit tag reader. If an animal has already been marked, we can release it without further ado, but this one has not been marked. We anesthetize the animals using a small dose of ketamine under the guidance and supervision of a local veterinarian. After a few minutes, the mongoose is calm and can be handled safely. We examine the general condition of the animal and check the teeth, which we can use as an indicator of age. With young individuals, it's sometimes difficult to tell the gender. Males have a bone inside the penis called a baculum, which you can palpate to feel. This one is a little male. We photograph the animals to keep a visual record of the animals, their condition, coloration, and condition of their teeth. Again, to get an estimate of their age. Next, I have an assistant hold the mongoose while I make a small incision on the inside of the right hind leg. And then I insert the pit tag under the skin of the thigh. We close the wound using a cyanoacrylate glue, similar to super glue, but it's actually a surgeon's glue. The incisions generally heal within a few days. All of the techniques we use are approved by my university's Institutional Animal Use and Care Committee. End of commercial. While the mongooses are anesthetized, we can help do PR for mongoose stem. Calvin Bell, a local kid from Cane Bay on the north side of the island, has never seen a mongoose up close, let alone actually held one for a few minutes. We return the mongoose to the trap to recover and after an hour or so take them back to the field and release them. All you have to do is hold the trap open and they run back off into the bushes. We have never lost a mongoose using these procedures, and I have trapped and handled over a thousand animals in the last 30 plus years. After a few days, many of the mongoose we catch have already been marked, so we, we can record their basic information and release them. The USDA has been assisting the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service by placing kill traps near the beach where the turtles nest in order to manage the mongoose population there.
Our research suggests that most of the mongoose on Sandy Point migrated there from further back on the island. Only several of the 50 plus animals marked as juveniles have been recaptured as adults. We see plenty of new adults, however, and infer that they must have migrated in from someplace else. We recommend constructing a barrier across the narrow land bridges on either side of the salt pond. Mongoose don't swim, and we believe that in a few years the mongoose population would drop significantly, and it would no longer be necessary to kill the mongoose to protect the sea turtles. A barrier might also reduce the number of feral dogs on the refuge, which also pose a significant threat to turtles and their nests. Thanks for watching. See you on the beach. Bye.